Hello and welcome to a quick overview tutorial on a fantastic and incredibly powerful new plugin from Yanobox called Storm. You may already know Yanobox from their equally powerful generative motion graphics plugin Nodes 3. In my opinion, Nodes 3 is one of the most underappreciated motion graphics plugins on the market. People tend to throw the phrase game changer around a lot, but Nodes really was a game changer for my motion design workflow and it looks like Storm is going to do for the design of generative organic forms what Nodes has already done for precise interconnected data design. Okay, so what does Storm actually do? Well, I can quote directly from the Storm user guide. They say that Storm is a GPU accelerated procedural displacement generator coupled with a 3D render engine. Well, what does that mean? Let's jump in and have a look. Now, Storm is available for Final Cut, After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Motion, but for today's overview, I'm going to be showing you some of the functionality within After Effects. First, we'll quickly create a 1920 by 1080 comp, add a solid, name it Storm, and add the Storm plugin to the solid. Immediately, we get this organic default form. Now, before we jump into the UI structure, I wanted to show you quickly that Storm does support the native After Effects camera, which makes integration into your motion design projects seamless. Add a new camera. Default is fine. Activate the camera tool and you can see it's fully integrated. Turn the camera off for now. Okay, now the plugin structure. So purely from a design perspective and in the most basic terms, I would break the UI structure down into three sections. The animation and transform sections, which deal with movement, the geometry, fractal noise, noise subtractor, and noise effector sections, which control how the form looks, and then the color, surface lighting, Fresnel, environment, and fog sections, which in very basic terms deal with lighting. Okay, let's quickly test out making the form move. The transform dropdown is going to be familiar to most After Effects users. Toggle down and there are all the basic transform controls. No surprises here. Now, as you'd expect with a robust AE plugin, everything is keyframable. But drop down the animation tab and there are a bunch of pre-programmed procedural animation options. There's a lot to choose from here, and you'll likely have some fun experimenting with how some of these actually function, but just to quickly show how assigning one works, let's go with an easy one, Transform Position X. Don't forget to add a speed and hit play. And now it procedurally moves along the X axis, no keyframes. Now these presets are stackable, add a transform rotation along the same X axis, same speed, Now it moves and rotates. Let's stack one more quickly. Fractal noise displacement with a speed. And play. Moves, rotates, and the displacement expands. Again, there's a lot to experiment with here. Some of it being geometry specific but for now, we'll move on to adjusting geometry. As we toggle down geometry, not a lot of mystery here. Our default primitive is a circle, which can easily be changed with the dropdown. You'll notice that each of the primitives, as you select them, slightly customizes the adjustable parameters menu for that individual primitive. With the plane, the width and height adjustments operate like you would expect. The torus has the outer, an inner radius, our original sphere has an overall radius control, and if we spin the geometry a bit here on the y-axis and take a look at the cylinder, you'll see adjustments for the overall radius and length. You will likely need to bump up the mesh resolution as you create more detailed geometry but you'll have to look at your individual GPU's power and memory and take that into consideration as higher resolution could really slow down your computer. So under Fractal Noise, this is where we start to dig a little deeper into some of the customization for Storm. 
There are five fractal noise types, and we'll touch just briefly on each one to see some quick examples of the effects that you can achieve with them. Within the user manual, there is definitely a deeper dive on the hows and whys of each type of noise, but here's my quick run through to get you started. First, I'm going to throw on my AE camera, and I think it's best to show some examples here on a plane. I'm going to zero out displacement, and we'll start with 3D, the default. This type displaces the mesh in all directions equally, as you can see. Now if I switch to directional, the displacement to the mesh is on one axis only. Those are the simple ones. Now rigid and we start to get some funky effects. In this case, all of the negative values of the displacement are clamped down. So you sort of start to get this veiny type effect within the positive values. This is a cool effect and the details really start to pop as you increase the number of octaves, which boosts the level of detail in the displacement. Again, like mesh resolution, increase the octaves with your GPU's capabilities in mind. On to curly, which in my mind looks the most topographical to me. I could imagine this being used for landscapes for one thing, and I'm sure a million other uses with some experimentation. Last is Harry. This one, with increased frequency and displacement, well, kind of lives up to its name. This may be useful in simulating organic shapes like hair, fur, or tentacles, possibly even grass. Finally, for this section, I'm going to jump back over to directional, and without getting into just a ton of detail on each parameter, I can say that octaves controls the total number of fractal layers affecting your mesh. Frequency then scales all of those fractal layers equally. Lacunarity, and yes, I had to look up how to pronounce that, we won't dive too far into today, but it increases the quality of the secondary fine details. Finally, there's roughness, which a full explanation involves some math, but long story short, it will produce a rougher surface with sharper angles. And you can see what I mean. These parameters will take some experimentation, but that should be enough to get you started on fractal noise. But beyond a doubt, this section is where you will really define the primary look and feel of your geometry all other sections will just help refine that look. Jumping on to Noise Subtractor, this is a secondary noise generator that you can use to influence your primary noise using subtraction. The two parameters you'll be mainly concerned about here are the sub amount and the sub frequency. If I decrease my displacement down to about one and then zoom in a bit, You can see that I can add tiny details or eliminate details altogether by adjusting these parameters. Now the noise effector, which may be somewhat familiar to anyone working with effectors in other programs like Cinema 4D. This is going to be especially useful in motion design work where you want to affect a mesh's displacement over time. I'll zoom out just a bit here and increase my displacement back to around four. Add a displacement falloff under effect, and by default you can see that our effector shape is visible. And by simply dragging the shape distance over the geometry, you can see how by keyframing the distance, you can affect the geometry over time. Add a twist noise to twist the entire geometry. back to displacement falloff and change the falloff shape from a plane to a sphere outside. Decrease its size to about 0.6 or so. And make the falloff about 
There are some really cool examples of the noise effector in action in the presets that I'll show you in a bit. The next five sections are a dedicated group for shading your geometry. They will simulate color, lighting, reflection, and refraction. Let's kill our noise effector and go back to a sphere as a primitive before jumping into color. From a 10,000 foot view, the color module allows you to set a uniform color or a choice of gradients that affect the way that the color distributes across your geometry. You can see uniform, depth, radius, and noise. Imagine how uniform may work great integrated into a flat 2D style motion graphic. Under gradient types, liquid uses your primary uniform color and white as the secondary color of your gradient. Temperature, your primary and then a temperature range. Simple gradient gives you two color controls over the gradient. Normals gives you a custom gradient built from the vertex normals of your mesh, and that unlocks some options here that are worth a deep dive at another time. On to surface lighting. Adjusting the percentage of universal diffuse, you can bring into view details of your geometry. Specular, as in any other design software, takes a little bit of a fine touch. But you have some controls here for the amount, the shininess, and color to dial in a highly shiny surface if that is what you're going for. Under light direction, there are a list of presets here. But if you're looking for more customization, custom unlocks a lot of user-defined parameters for your light. And this is probably where you want to be if you want to fine tune your lighting look. For now, like specular takes a bit of a light touch, but it can help you dial in shininess if you are going for a highly reflective surface. The environment module in my mind is one of the most powerful features of Storm and really helps to define and refine your custom mesh. It allows you to create and use spherical 360 degree skyboxes to generate reflection and refraction on your mesh. This is going to give you great metal, liquid, and glass effects fairly easily. To show you environment, I've gone back to our default organic shape. I'll jump into color here and go with uniform and black color. Jump down to environment, turn the percentage up to 100%. You see already we are getting this nice metal look. Let's refine a little by changing the shading to reflection and refraction and bringing the environment blur down to zero. Now Storm comes preloaded with 11 environment maps and you should give each a look. But for a great chrome look, let's go with CG Studio. You instantly get this nice chrome effect. Now check this out. Scroll down to background and set to environment map. Let's boost the environment map resolution and then make our camera nice and wide. And there, we have our geometry living within our environment. Ready to animate the After Effects camera or apply procedural animations as seen here in one of Storm's preset examples. Another powerful feature is the ability to load your own equal rectangular map, which opens up a world of customization possibilities. Finally, within the lighting modules, fog. This will help simulate atmospheric depth and density. Activate the module and then bring up the amount. Then tweak offset, which will adjust the distance of your fog back in Z space, and range, which controls the depth of the fog's effect on your mesh. So hopefully that overview of Storm's functionality will get you started. 
As you likely saw as I toggled down into the various menus, I've barely scratched the surface of Storm's functionality. There's a lot more to experiment with and explore. A really good way to jumpstart a motion design project with Storm or just to delve into some of the more advanced functionality and customization is to click on the Browse Presets button and it opens up a treasure trove of over 200 presets. The presets alone are a rabbit hole that is easy to jump into and spend hours tweaking and customizing. So that is Yanobox's robust new plugin Storm in a nutshell. If you want to check it out for yourself, head over to yanobox.com and there is a lot of good information to be found there, including a fully functional free trial version you can try before buying.